Hi YouTube, my name's Jeff and I'm the Vegil Guy. Grass. Well, weeds and grass. I hate cutting both. So I came up with the idea of building a remote control lawnmower and the wife agreed to cut the lawn whilst I was building it. And that was 15 years ago. Okay, not really, but in truth it was last summer. Now, it's not finished yet, but it's ready enough for a test run. So I quickly rigged a temporary shelf and loaded on the batteries and the electrical bits. Not bad, eh? Okay, it's a bit too low. The blade is catching the ground a little, so it needs raising maybe half an inch, but it still works. More importantly than that, to me it looks really good. And even more importantly than that, everyone that sees it wants to have a go at driving it, so I'm still not cutting the lawn. It's quite difficult to show you this in my usual step-by-step -step manner, as everyone's requirements might be different. For example, you might prefer to use wheels rather than caterpillar tracks, and your mower might be a completely different size and shape to mine. So here's an overview of what I've done so far. This is a self-propelled Honda petrol mower. I wanted petrol, not electric, so as to not tax the requirement of the batteries. And whilst this mower is self-propelled, that's not strictly necessary. I started by giving everything a quick clean and removing the wheels and the handles, but I didn't cut any cables just yet. One of the first obstacles I had to get around was the safety cutoff. This model has one of those handles that needs pushing forward, the sort that everybody just ties in place. Come on, you know you do. Well, without the handles, it was necessary to secure the safety mechanism in place. This was easy enough. I followed the cable down to this little lever, and it was just a matter of squeezing it a little, which I did with a nut and bolt. That got rid of the cable and safety feature, but for the health and safety minded out there, I'll be building in another safety system later on, though it won't be in this video. The engine is a typical pull cord variety, and the fuel controller needed to be attached to something. So I used the old handle to make this shorter one, which I bolted to the body. I emptied out all the oil and petrol, then turned the mower on its side. Underneath was in fine condition, just a little surface rust. There's a belt hidden behind the blade that turns a few cogs in this gearbox, which in turn drives the wheels. But this was of no use to me, so I removed the blade, the belt and the gearbox. I rubbed down the loose rust and gave everything a coat of anti-rust paint. I wanted to retain the option of attaching a grass collector, and this model throws the cuttings out of the back, but it's very one-sided, and I knew this might give me motor fixing issues later on. So I set about centralizing the hole. Cutting away extra metal with my angle grinder was easy, but I took care not to remove any structural strength. Of course, this left me with large gaps that needed filling. I could have used sheet metal for this, but I had a length of four inch waste pipe to hand. I cut a straight slot down this, applied a heat gun, then straightened the pipe out into a nice solid sheet of plastic. I cut this to shape and bonded it in place with car body filler. I was so pleased with this, I got carried away and painted it up too soon in honesty, and I hadn't recorded the other side. But it was the same sort of process, plastic, filler and paint. I took my angle grinder and cut away the majority of these welded on brackets, roughly smoothing things out with car body filler. Where the wheels had been removed, I was able to bolt on some 12mm threaded rod. I knew I needed to suspend the mower somehow, and this seemed a good starting point. To power the mower along, you need a couple of motors, and I opted for wheelchair motors as these are strong, reliable, and reasonably priced second hand. It's important that these are brushed motors and the emergency brake is best removed. How these motors get attached is largely down to how you want the mower to be steered. Some folks opt for a skid steer system. 
Some folks opt for shopping cart wheels on the front. Others go for the more complex option of creating a steering mechanism to turn the front wheels. In all of the above, the motors can be attached to the body of the mower in some way. I wanted the extra traction associated with Caterpillar tracks and, let's be honest, I thought they looked really good. This meant I needed a little extra room. So I built a simple frame from one inch box steel and this is just a little bit bigger all around than the mower. I designed my Caterpillar tracks from scratch, coming up with a fairly simple design that could be manufactured with the most basic of tools and yet still give me all the articulation I was looking for. These tracks had to be driven by a sprocket connected to each motor. And these I cast myself using my lost foam casting technique. The motors were bolted to the rear of the frame and the sprockets were bolted to the motors. But I still needed to connect sprockets to the front of the frame. At that time I came up with this simple T-fixing and it was a mistake I'll talk about later on. These were simply bolted to the frame. I also cast some support wheels. These help carry the weight of the tracks and prevent any overdue strain on individual links, especially on rough terrain. I decided to use box frame to suspend the mower from the frame and also provide a means of height adjustment. I connected simple uprights to my 12mm axle rods, then placed the tracks and frames around the mower. I was then able to exercise my terrible welding skills to wrap the box frame uprights with slightly larger box section, welding this to the outer frame. By drilling holes in these uprights, one at each corner, I was able to slide bolts through and successfully suspend the mower. More holes could be drilled at intervals to provide height adjustment. The advantage of this setup is that the mower is never permanently fixed in place. With the bolts removed, the frame and tracks can be lifted up and off, leaving the mower behind. And that's pretty much where we came in at the start of this video. It was looking good, to me at least, and although I tested the tracks quite heavily, these had never carried the full weight of the mower before. So I added a temporary shelf, strapped down two car batteries, hooked up the radio control gear, and gave the mower its first test run. It genuinely thrilled me. It ploughed through the grass with ease, kicking out clouds of cuttings. The blade was clearly too low, so I had to drill some lower bolt holes to adjust the cutting height. And even though I scalped my lawn in places, I couldn't resist playing with it for a couple of hours, with no sign of the batteries getting tired. However, this was its first outing as a mower, and the blade height was not the only problem. If you look carefully here, you can see the forces involved have bent the 12mm bolt holding the front sprocket in place, and this is twisting the track slightly. I think I'll upgrade this to a 16mm bolt, and cast a better support mechanism. I'll also tidy up my terrible welds, add strength, and try to deduct some weight if I can. I also want to add a safety cutoff feature in case the mower ever goes driving off without me. I'll properly house the batteries and electronics, as well as set up an easy means to charge the batteries without unnecessary swapping of cables. But those things will take a little time to get around to, and the good news is my wife can cut the lawn again. I'm sure she'll be delighted about that. Whee! I'll share any updates in future videos. So I hope you enjoyed this show and tell guys, if you did, please like it. If you've got any questions about all this, drop me a line and I'll do my best to help. Please look out for my other videos, my YouTube channel and my website. So that's it for now guys, thanks for watching.